with Ethereum, Ether and ERC-20 are treated differently. So Ether is an asset, ERC-20 is a smart contract. And as a consequence, everything kind of competes for the same pool of resources. Whereas in Cardano, ADA and a native asset are treated the exact same way. So they're first class citizens. So this is going to allow us to do all kinds of really cool things, including eventually allowing people to pay their transaction fees in the native asset, which you cannot do with Ethereum right now. When you issue an ERC-20 token, you pay your fees in Ether. Basically, the idea is that you have transaction pairing. So when you issue your native asset transaction, somebody else, probably a stake pool operator, will agree to cover the fee of that transaction plus a piggyback fee, and then uh, you ride on that rail. Now, uh, you'll pay that SPO or whoever is doing that uh, the transaction fee in the native asset. So this means that SPOs are basically like many exchanges in that respect, and they can kind of uh, decide which, uh, which native assets they want to support and then eventually build portfolios of them. It's something that will likely come this year, and it's an additional revenue stream for stake pool operators, and it allows them to kind of decide which coins they like, uh, and marketplaces can form. Uh, and then from the user experience, it's all automated. So you just basically get quoted transaction fee in the native asset, you pay it, but then under the hood, there's actually uh, a double ADA fee coming in, one for the uh, native asset transaction and one for the piggyback.